Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Project Immersion TV and my mini review of the next level Racing Motion V3. Time seems to go so quickly these days and only 9 months after the V2 was released the V3 was born and it graced my games room. Within half an hour it had replaced the previous version underneath my GT Ultimate V2 rig and it was ready to go. I'm going to refer you to my previous review of the V2 and concentrate on the differences between the two. But before I get into details, let me just say that the whole experience is immediately much more sophisticated than the V2. The same level of speed with the movements on paper I guess, but without the albeit quiet but industrial mechanical noises. The fans are also quieter, a lot quieter, and I'm noticing straight away the little bumps much more than I did with the V2. It seems more intricate if that makes sense. Next level I've listened to the feedback from the V1 and the V2 users and made a lot of subtle but major improvements some of which I'll go into detail about here, particularly the ones that affected me during my 9 months of the V2. There are a few seemingly unannounced but game changing differences between the V2 and the V3 that I'd like to point out early on in this review to help others that may be upgrading. You may prevent them damaging their new unit while cutting some corners that are not safe. First up, do not use the V2 butt kick amount on the V3. The unit itself is insulated to reduce what was a low noise output to one of an ultra low noise. To accommodate this padding inside, the V3 is physically bigger than the previous iteration which means there have been some design changes, the first of which is the butt kick amount. I repeat, do not use the V2 butt kick amount. If you do manage to attach the butt kicker with the old type mount after some wrestling, the butt kicker will foul the V3 when in motion and damage the casing for sure, or more likely put too much of a strain on the motors breaking something major inside. The V3 mount is longer by quite a bit for this very good reason. I say again, do not use the V2 butt kicker mount. Now that's out of the way, um, let's look at some of the other differences. The V2's cradle was held together by some cold rivets in places and on some units these work loose over a very short space of time. These have now been replaced with allen bolts. I made some rubber bumpers to stop a clanking noise on the V2 where the rods at the front hit the cradle during movement. These have been reproduced professionally now so there is none of that annoyance and come fitted as standard to the V3. With the standard supplied USB cable on the V2, regularly I would get the signal drops and the unit would flop forward or just stop, usually with me hanging on mid-corner. I replaced the USB cable and this sorted it. The USB cable now supplied with the V3 has been upgraded from the one supplied with the V2 and has two ferrite cores to stop any interference. The signal has not dropped out once with this cable, nor has the unit flopped forwards or needed a reset as it did on occasion previously. The calibration routine is almost instant at power up now and it seems to cope much better when my weight shifts on a stationary seat. The V2 would seem to recalibrate to compensate when I shifted about to get comfy previously. The V3 does so also but as the whole thing is so damn quiet it's not obvious at all. As I said it's sophisticated. The side panels that are used for fixing the unit to the GT Ultimate V2 seat are now universal and more compact but you still need to fit the motion unit to the rear three holes. The size reduction has enabled Next Level to pack them into the same box now for shipping. Right, the advertised differences are few, but there are some very significant improvements. These are adaptive fan speed control, industrial grade position sensors, reduced noise of operation, redesigned spring holders and super smooth operation and advanced actuator speed management. All of these combined and the feeling and experience I have with the V3 leads me to a phrase I pass back to the developers in December, sophisticated immersion. If combined with VR, it's incredible. So let's take a few minutes to see the V3 in action. Most of the settings are default out of the box for a set of courser in this clip. AC more than most racing sims is a very good method of sending proportional forces out to the motion unit, so each type of car feels different. Forces from a road car are very subtle compared to a GT3, which is a lot rougher, and an open wheeler becomes very harsh. This is transmitted to any motion platform very well, and the V3 has no problem helping you to feel as if you are in a particular vehicle and experiencing the right kind of g-force and tactile feedback to suit. I'm taking the 718 Spider out and have the overall intensity turned down to about 70%. When I'm on a screen, I prefer to turn the intensity down as it feels more realistic but when in VR I turned them all up to 100%. When I had the V2, I was in regular and direct contact with Next Level 
and one of the motion systems developers and I fed back some ideas that me and a pal came up with and they listened and introduced a new slider option called weight transfer bias. I found that the surge forces under braking were a little too strong but if I turned them down it affected the less strong to start with acceleration forces to the point they could hardly be felt. This slider allows me to balance the surge forces and bias it to my liking independently of the intensity slider. I usually have this set to minus 40 to reduce the braking force and increase the acceleration force. As you can see the movement on camera seems quite subtle, and it is, but it's just the right amount to fool my brain into thinking I'm actually driving. This is what a seat mover or g-force simulator is all about. It's not about being on a roller coaster ride that a turned up to full motion rig can deliver to you. It's about fooling your senses just enough so that it's not more uncomfortable than the real thing and you feel immersed. I saw a comment from a previous V2 owner stating it was laggy as hell recently. I have not noticed any lag with the V2 or the V3. Maybe my setup is different. Most are not the same and I do have a belting quick PC after all. One important point I'm going to highlight here is to make sure that the motion platform is the first unit to get the game output. Many of us have multiple devices such as tactile feedback, dashboards, telemetry screens etc. Running many different APIs from the telemetry out gauge or similar game output and some take the data in parallel to each other but others share ports or are in a series or daisy chain configuration or the data is passed from the first to the next and so on. So make sure you're not proxying the data from anywhere before it arrives at the motion platform. That way it will move first and the seat of your pants will be as in sync as it can be with the car seat. In this next clip I'm taking the F15 around Silverstone. What a combination. I have to say that normally I would have my VR headset on but I haven't quite worked out how to get AC recorded properly when using it yet. Anyway, I think here you will see how in sync the seat is with my actual visuals on screen and my input showing zero lag. I have world movement tuned with all G-force effects at zero and camera shake turned off so that the cockpit on screen stays static. Just like my wheel in front of me and the world moves around it on screen. So when I go over a bump, the seat simulates pitch surge and on screen the world moves in sync with my motion. There are several obvious good examples in this clip. I'll leave you to have a little watch for a moment to see if you can spot them. I guess it's only fair that I put my headphones on and give you a lap of how the unit sounds in my room without the game audio. It's incredibly quiet. I have book kicker turned off in all of these clips and the tactile feedback of the Motion V3 is very good indeed, just as it was on the V2. And while still not as sharp as the book kicker Simvi combo when added to the seat, it's more than adequate if you've never experienced tactile feedback with that combo and crave that extra little bit of immersion. It's only fair to note at this point that the microphone from the camera is about 40 centimeters away from the motion unit. In fact, you can just see it in the, uh, the left picture uh, about midway down. Um, it's a little bit further away uh, from the Fnatic Clubsport Wheel F1 paddle shifters, which I think you can hear slightly louder than the unit uh, clicking. Uh, that gives you an idea of the actual volume. Uh, of the unit itself.
As I already mentioned, Next Level have listened, rethought and have improved significantly on what was already, in my opinion, the best value off the shelf 2 degree of freedom motion platform on the market. The new adaptive fan speed control really does take away the constant fan noise most of the time, only kicking up when the extreme cooling is needed. The unit runs cooler overall despite the insulated case, which reduces the overall noise to a whisper quiet operation. In use the movements are more accurate and defined due to the industrial grade sensors now in place, making the slightest changes in any direction noticeable and instantaneous, and slow movements are oh so smooth, helped along by the much more precise advanced actuator speed management. So whilst the differences seem small, including the colour change to my favourite, a deep glossy black, they make for a much greater immersive experience, which as you know by now is what I chase in sim racing. Does it make me faster? Well, probably a little over time, but with more and more titles adding VR to their immersive catalogue this year, the compact size of the next level motion makes this a platform of choice for those who need a relatively cheap, instant, small footprint seat mover to heighten their experience. Big screens or triples are no longer needed with the improvements in VR, meaning that a large space is not required for them, and the next level Motion V3 complements that requirement, bringing immersion to a new level and a tiny space to everybody, right here, right now, and today. The developers have added a VR compensation called Headway to the Platform Manager software, which keeps your head where it should be in the cockpit when you are being moved around by the platform, and it really does work. Is it worth the upgrade from the V2? Hell yes. If you haven't already got motion, then I also reckon it's worth the asking price for sure. If you want a quiet, accurate motion rig that fits under your seat, that produces levels of immersion, it's a hard to show on camera. But, if you have the space and the time, and possibly want the bragging rights about your own home-brewed half-the-cost DIY platform that the neighbours three stores down can appreciate when you race, then the next level motion V3 is definitely not for you. Personally, I no longer have the time to DIY like I used to only a few years ago when I started seeking further immersion in sim racing, and I really value my time. I just want to pick up and play, and thankfully this allows me to do just that, with profiles for an almost endless list of sims and games right out of the box that need very little tweaking. Of course, with each regular release of the software and firmware, more titles are added and more options for tweaking should you wish to tinker are brought in. If you want to see my previous VT review, I'll put a link at the bottom. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the grid.